The NFL playoffs have arrived, and we have you covered each day on Outkick's Hot Mic with Hutton Withrow. Some of the best football guests break down the biggest matchups from Armando Salguero and Donovan McNabb to Ryan Leaf and Bobby Carpenter, plus the top headlines and reaction to each playoff weekend. So, Chad, which quarterback is sent to that next level? The Brock Purdy, Dak Prescott, Tua is on this list. Got to be Lamar Jackson, right? Yeah, it's I think, his time right I now. think so. Yeah, it's, it's his time to shine. He's done it in the regular season. He's won MVP. He's going to win it again. It is time for him to win in the playoffs. Playoffs are also a time to shine for Patrick Mahomes. Can he and the Chiefs offense figure it out in order to repeat this playoff season? There's plenty of craziness on a week-to-week basis, so pull up the bar with us each weekday wherever you listen to your podcast. NFL and more covering your favorite teams. Outkicks Hot Mike with Hutton and Withrow. All right, what's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the T-Moss Boss Show. Then today's episode. So, I felt that it's needed to warn. I mean, I feel like it's not really a warning because I I feel that we overall know like if a person can be trusted and cannot be trusted. I feel like we are at a point in time of our lives and then just in this like era of life, we should overall know when a person cannot be trusted. But at times, you know, that's the thing where you guys sit down and think about it, that anything is possible. You know, a person's lifestyle can be possible. A person's, you know, mindset can be possible. More so meaning that it can be the first time ever in your whole life where you've ever been, like, screwed over by a friend and stuff. And, um, no, nah, man, it's a, it's a very, very messed up feeling, you know, when you have somebody that you genuinely care about, but they can't have that same level of care for you. It's messed up, you know, it's something that we either have all dealt with it or we will deal with it at some point in time. And, um, no, nah, it's just the best possible advice that I can give you is don't let it break you. You know, don't don't let it destroy you. Like if a friend screws you over, fam, that's that's on them and the mindset that they got. You know, at the end of the day, they know that they're doing something wrong. So that's why it's just it's one of those things where it's like you shouldn't have to live with that pain. You shouldn't have to live with, you know, whatever it is that you're going through, depression, um, frustration, all that, all that that you most likely will go through when you get screwed over by a friend. You shouldn't have to uh, live with that. And that's why I'm doing this episode more so to motivate anybody out there that is going through it because, you know, you have been screwed over by a friend. And I know that probably is the main question. How do you get over something like that? How how do you get over um, a friend screwing you over and things? For one, I feel like that it should, you know, also like when something like that happens, it definitely should have you more aware of the people in your friend group. You know, whether it's like you got like that friend group, like that close friend group, or it's just a bunch of people that you just friends with, with regardless. It should be a situation where now, after being screwed over by a friend, your eyes should be open. And I mean, looking at everybody, looking at people that you've been friends with for a long period of time, looking at somebody that you just became friends with. It's one of those things where it's like, you know, at that point in time, you cannot let your guard down. And that's something where the times I've been screwed over by friends, it's something where I'm like, I look at the situation afterwards and that's just more so my mind i can't really say that it's like a paranoia i can't really say that i like i I just don't try to be cool with nobody like obviously show people the same you know respect that i would want in um you know to get in things but at the same time it's like that trust level you know i know that there's people out there that trust me and I think it's just more so because like, and I'm, I'm not trying to like make it seem like I'm the greatest friend of all time, but I do feel that compared to how some people have treated me, yeah, I, I would say that I am a, a good friend. I'm not going to, um, uh, you know, downplay myself and things, but at the same time, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I might not be the most perfect friend. Yeah, there's at times where friends want to hang out, friends want to play video games, and I'm either caught up in my feelings or caught up with my career or just don't overall want to do nothing. And yeah, you know, I have to say, like, that's as far as it's ever has gone, you know, but I feel like that's something where, and the thing is this, even though I might say that that's something that I wouldn't be upset about, I know I would be upset about it i was getting ready to say that but i started thinking about it i'm like i would be upset about some stuff i remember no 
I remember I was a kid and there was this uh, um, kid that used to live in the neighborhood where he had like I was cool. I remember I um, I used to be cool with his sisters. I think it was just one of those things where it's like, yeah, we grew apart and stuff. But anyways, um, cool with his sisters. That was cool with him. You know, we all just kind of like hung out as a group. It wasn't like, you know, when, uh, when we did hang out as a group, like we never conversate and talked or any of that stuff. Um, and it was, this is something I'm paying attention to as a kid, by the way, like I, this ain't like somewhere, cause I feel like kids, you know, some kids might be clueless to that type of stuff. Then again, I don't know, you know, but anyways, I, well, I can't say that cause I was like, I wasn't, you know, that clueless and stuff. Like I paid attention to that type of stuff. But so anyways, it was, um, me, um, the, the kid that I would be talking about and a bunch of other friends that was, uh, in the neighborhood and so yeah like i was saying you know everybody would talk with everybody it wasn't like you know nobody wasn't talking to anybody and things i talked to the, um the kid i talked to the other friends in the neighborhood talked to the sisters all that crap so anyways um i remember one day just you know wanting to just see what he was up to just wanting to hang out whatever and things and when i tell you like i that i'm this is something that i genuinely paid attention to like after a while i was like no nah, i'm not even going forward with that kid no more seen him in school didn't say nothing to him you know seen him sitting with friends go find some other friends to sit with so i'll knock on this kid's door right any other day of the week this kid's outside playing i come over to um you know i'll go over to his house be like hey man you want to like go outside freaking ride bikes you know just chill whatever and things this kid always, I mean, always had an excuse. And that's something where I'm like, you know, the thing is, is I, I think that in this point in time in my life, I'm, you know, a very communicating person, meaning that if I'm going through something, I'm going to tell that friend that. So if a friend's all like, hey, let's play games tonight, I'm going to tell them I'm feeling kind of down right now. You know, don't really just feel like I, I'm not in that mindset. But if not that, my thing is this. Every time when I do play games with my friends, especially the friends that usually ask me, I'm, you know, I'm chilling. I'm, it's never, even if there is a day where I'm feeling down, I'm like, nah, man, I'm chilling. I know it's going to be a good day and things. So it was just one of those things where it's like, if a person don't want to be cool with you, you'll you'll know that most likely at a young age, like in your like kid. And, I, and the thing is this, and if you never did notice it, hopefully this episode is an eye opener because i'm pretty sure there has been a moment when you was a kid and you went to go sit with some kids you went to go talk with some kids you went to you know just do something else you know hanging out with some kids like in that sense but they ain't want nothing to do with you they ain't want to be bothered they want to find everything wrong with you bro i remember being a kid and kids was trying to get on me for being a wrestling fan i'm saying like that that's one thing about people and i'm not going to say all people but i am going to say some people is that they want to find the dumbest thing about you and make that into the biggest thing possible and it's the it's so weird to me because i'm like i've been friends with so many different types of people i've been friends with people that have disabilities i've been friends with people that um you got like some sort of like anger issues or whatever i've been friends with people that are overly emotional i've been friends with people that joke around too much i have to say i've been friends with just about everybody in every genre of people possible okay the crazies the normals the average the whatevers you know like i have been friends with just about everybody and that's one thing that i can say is that there has never been a time where i've yeah i guess like you know more so with people i'm like okay yeah we was never friends in the first place but people where it's like it's that same um level of respect that same level of like that friend love i guess you know yeah it, it's never been no issues i'm pretty sure people that I haven't talked to in years where it's like it's never been no issues we can still pick up and you know, pick off of um the last time we were uh we were in the same room with one another and see and that's it's those types of friendships they're the most beautiful friendships of all time somebody where it's like you guys like okay so scenario you met somebody um, when you was in elementary, right? Met somebody when you was in elementary, friends with them for years. The guys never had um, a bad moment. Spent the night at each other's house, ate lunch with one another, played outside during recess and all that stuff. You know, and, and then when you guys like, now elementary, it was more so preschool where you took naps and things. All right, so let's say it was like the elementary school that I went to. Let's say they had like that that afternoon uh, uh, era or afternoon time where you guys get to take a little nap. 
nap. You guys would take naps with um, one another and things like y'all was solid. Y'all was a unit. Y'all was literally Triple H and um, Shawn Michaels and like the final few uh, moments of DX, bro. Like, no, you guys were the best of friends, okay? The best of friends. Somebody where it's like, if you guys did get into an argument, y'all squashed it the very next day and you guys was chilled with one another, all right? But at some point in time, either you or that friend moves, goes somewhere different, fast forward, you guys are adults now, and then all of a sudden, you know, you see this friend, it is, it's honestly like how, it's like that, that old video of them two kids where it's like they're like running down this uh, sidewalk and they give each other a hug, that it's literally that same level of friend love. Like, you you haven't seen this person in years, bruh. And all of a sudden, you just randomly see them, and it's brought back all that joy and happiness that you once felt. Now, you guys, it's like, y'all is still, like, adult years. I'm saying, like, y'all was, like, friends with one another when you was in elementary. But all of a sudden, fast forward to your adult years, like, you know, went through all these life changes. But you see that one friend that you haven't seen in years, and it changes the whole game, bruh. It's those friendships that are the most beautiful friendships of all time. And I highly encourage people to look for those friendships. But if you got a question of friendship, if you got to question somebody in your life, cut them out. Just honestly cut them out because it is the best thing. I didn't have to do it. I had to do it with numerous friends from all eras of my life. From uh, when I was a kid to my teenage years all the way up into my adult years now. I didn't have to cut out people. Because I felt that I wasn't valued as a friend. Not like how I would value them as a friend, but I felt that I wasn't valued as a friend. So it's one of those things where I'm like, okay, I got to make an executive uh, decision. I got to make that decision on whether or not to keep this person in my circle and have it where they continue taking advantage of, you know, my kindness, my weakness and everything about me or cut them out. And, you know, start, start fresh. So have like where it's like, okay, yeah, you know, at the end of the day, that person might be a friend that you genuinely care for. That person might be somebody that you got nothing but love for. But you got to ask yourself that question. Do they have that same amount of love for you? Because if you say no, fam, you got to cut them off. And it's like, yeah, that's going to be a big void that is missing within you. But it's going to, it's, the thing is, is this, when you fill that void up, with somebody that has the same level of love and respect that you have for them, you're, it's gonna, cause I, I'll have to say, I remember when, uh, like that whole situation back when I was in high school with the girl that, uh, she turned me down because of me being black. And I'm like, okay, I ain't got no control over that. It's not like, you know, there's, there's like, I can go to the character customization settings of my life and change my race. You know, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, are you sure you want to continue? Because once when you uh, press, okay, there ain't no going back. So yeah, bro, I'm, I'm black for life. You know, that's something, that's something that I cannot change in things, but I felt that she didn't value me as a friend. And I was like, that was something where I had to sit down and think about it where I'm like, okay, is it going to be good for me to continue being friends with this person? No. So at some point in time, I had to cut them off. Yeah, at some point, I did, you know, reach out to them to just see how uh, things was going. But at the same time, it just didn't, it didn't feel like how it once was, like, when before, you know, that whole situation and things with the whole race thing and stuff. Yeah, it just, it didn't feel the same. And even the situation after that, I was like, the other girl, I was like, yeah, it, it just, the aftermath of it, it, it just didn't really feel the same but i'm like even besides like them like i said the one kid that i grew up with i'm trying to think there's um even to, like at this old elementary school that i used to go to like there's moments where i know i think i even talked on this one moment where the girl i, I i've done i did absolutely nothing to this girl bruh absolutely nothing but anyways i remember uh you know like i was me and her we had like the same friends and stuff so there would be at times where if my like you know friend group if they hadn't showed up to school yet then i'm just chilling with like you know the same you gotta have multiple friend groups all right i'm just saying that right now but at the same time like i i guess like because i feel like there's always a leader in the friend group and stuff there's always that one person where they're kind of like the the tom brady of the group and things so the one kid i would have to say 
I can't even think of his name, but I would say that he was like the Tom Brady of the group and stuff. So anyways, me going and talking to my Tom Brady. <laughs> so I go over there and I'm chilling, you know, or actually, no. So they had like this, uh, like it wasn't really a bunk bed type thing, but it was kind of like in that it was like a cousin to a bunk bed, but it wasn't no bed. It was like a chill area. So they had like this bottom area where like probably like five to like eight kids can fit in and things and just literally sit around each other and just be talking and then they had this top part where it was the same exact thing like eight kids can fit up to on top of there and just be chilling so I seen he was on the uh, top part I go up there and I start talking with him about um because I think I think at that time did Grand Theft Auto San Andreas come out I think it was some game that had came out and I remember asking him about it and this girl just randomly started going off on me, talking about, why are you here? Like, go away, get out of here. And I'm looking at her confused because I'm like, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to Tom Brady. So, like, why why is you approaching me like that? I'm saying, like, that just don't even make no sense. I just, you know, so I left because I'm like, okay, you know, I'm most likely going to say something or, you know, throw a snowball at her as hard as I possibly can when, when it snows. But I'm like, you know what? I ain't going to fool with this girl. This girl's crazy. I'm, I'm just going to go on about my business. So then there was another day, and I think that was like that day she genuinely felt bad, but it was after that. I, I just never had any anything to say to her I was like if I seen her hanging out with friends I wouldn't even talk with them I wouldn't say nothing I was like no um if I gotta chill by myself I'm gonna chill by myself but so anyways um I think there was a day where I sat down I guess just to kind of see I don't know I think I was more so like testing it out and I was like if this girl goes off about some dumb stuff I'm like I'm no I, I ain't got nothing to say to her and things and so anyways I think I sat with her I said something, and she started going off about that same business, like, why are you here? I don't care what you're talking about. Go away. Leave me alone. So I, I think I remember I just snapped, and I just went off on her, and I was like, you know, there's no reason for you to be mean to me. I've never said anything or done anything to you. I'm saying, like, that's just weird to be carrying on like that. I said something. I, look, I'm going to tell you this right now. When I say that I was a smart kid growing up, and I paid attention to stuff, I was a smart kid growing up, and I paid attention to stuff. So I definitely felt a certain way, and and I let her know of it. And so I, I remember I got up. Because I think, with, with me, I think everybody know I could get loud. Like, if I'm, when I get mad, I get loud, okay? So I think I definitely did get loud. And then uh, I remember I was walking up. And then she was all like, um, no, wait, I'm sorry. Like, I didn't mean to. I was like, no, nah, man, I ain't trying to hear that. And so I said, I don't remember the exact words. But I do remember, I, I think I did say, like, I don't, something that she would usually say. I think it was, like, I don't care or something like that. And then I just walked off and minded my own business. I was like, no, I ain't got nothing to say to you. I was like, you go out, do your own thing. I'm going to go and do my own thing. I haven't talked to that girl since. I was like, and that was, that was like back when I was like, what, maybe a kid? I, it's funny because. Because I, I remember when I created a social media account, I seen so many different kids that I grew up with. And I think at some point in time, I did see her account. Didn't bother to add her. I was all like, hey, I wish you well in life. But it's one of those things where I'm like, you know, it, it's on. It's kind of like on some Taraji P. Henson stuff when she was on Empire. You know, it's like, I got to put myself first, Lucius. <laughs> like, I, I can't be. The thing is, is this. I'm at a point in time in my life. And I feel like I I have always have had this in me. It just took, you know, a lot of moments in my life to get me to this point. But yeah, it's like when I realize that I'm not wanted, whether it's a, you know, a friendship, a friend group, a community, whatever the situation is, I back out. I'm not going to try to like make my presence you know uh like establish i'm not gonna try to you know chase i'm not gonna try to do nothing where it involves me doing too much work that i shouldn't be doing you know especially when that same level of work isn't being given back to me so my thing is this if i'm not appreciating the um in a friend group then i'm not gonna appreciate the friendship i'm cutting the friendship off if i'm not appreciated in a um friend group did i say friend group at first all right friendship not appreciated then yeah you know cut off all that stuff Friend group, if I feel that I'm not appreciated in that friend group, I'm cutting the, fr I'm, yeah, I'm ex exiting out of the friend group. A community, let's say if it's on some content creating stuff, if I feel that I'm not welcome into that community, then I'm not even going to fool with it no more. I'm like, hey, that community, I wish, and, that, and that's the thing where it's like, I've been on this mindset where it's like, I wish you well in life. I wish you nothing but the best. But the thing is, is this. It shouldn't be a situation, right? And this is this is the dark part of this whole podcast episode. It shouldn't be a situation 
where one day you're chilling, all right? Whole world is being normal. You're just chilling. You minding your own business. Like, let, let's just talk on like uh, as, as little as a friendship, right? So let's just, yeah, let's just say the friendship ends, blah, blah, blah. Things go down, moving on, all that stuff, right? So it's on some stuff where you don't appreciate the friendship, right? And you're chilling, minding your own business, going through any other normal day you're going through. All of a sudden, your phone just starts blowing up. Or even if it's on some stuff where you open up social media and you see, rest in peace, that friend that you screwed over. How, how would that genuinely make you feel? Like, that? that is something that I would like to ask a lot of people that have, you know, screwed over. Like, people I've seen screw over others, people that screwed me over. That's something that I would like a genuine answer for. And if it's on some stuff where you say, I don't care, then I'm like, okay, keep that same energy, all right? Because if some stuff, because I'm saying the world, it's crazy nowadays. You never really know what's going to happen next, all right? But yeah, let's just say, I, because I, I, the thing is, is this, I know people probably ask, like, how do you think you're the people that have screwed you over? How do you think they will feel? You know, a part of me wants to, because I'm, I'm kind of in a conflicted mindset. I think, there's a higher percentage of them feeling extremely sad about it and stuff, but there's still also there is some uh, percentage that's there where I genuinely think they wouldn't care. I think that they would go on about their lives. They wouldn't care because my, my thing is this. You didn't value the friendship when I was here. Why are you going to all of a sudden now value the friendship when I'm gone? You know, like that and that and it's seriously that is the evil world we live in where it's like it's going to probably be a situation where it's like, yeah, some, you know, people that screwed me over there and heard something that happened to me. Then it's like they want to because like, no, it's like you see my thing is this. Even though it's been done in, like, fictional movies, I'm pretty sure some, like, you know, fictional movies, it's like, yeah, it might not be based on a true story or inspired by a true story, but I'm pretty sure it was picked up from something. Because there is this, there's this movie, I've mentioned this movie a lot of times, but... There's this movie called Imitation of Life, and it's this old, uh, like, like was it a 50s movie or a 60s movie? Hold on for a second. Let me look up that movie real quick. But it's this old movie, and it's about this uh, mom, this daughter, and then some friends and all that stuff. So anyways, uh, the daughter, so Imitation of... I think, yeah, because I looked it up before because I remember my mom, she asked me a question about that because it was a movie that my mom had told me about. All right, so, yeah, the movie was done in 1959. So, anyways, um, but, yeah, so it's about this black mom, her black daughter, but the daughter looked kind of white and stuff. So, she kind of had, like, a Mariah Carey type thing going on where it's, like, she looked like she could have been, you know, she just, she didn't look white, but she looked white, if that makes sense. So, anyways, um, but, yeah, all throughout the movie is dogging the mom. I'm saying dogging the mom bro and it's you watch that movie and it's like it's so disrespectful because it's like it's one of those movies where i guess like if you got a disrespectful child like talking to a parent yeah definitely um have them watch that movie and if nothing changed then yeah that, that's just a misguided child you know but anyways i guess all right, uh, uh, turn it into a real well i mean not obviously like do something to alter your life but i guess like you know act it out in things like make it seem like something happened to you so your um kid can appreciate you more and it's like okay why can i not get this same amount of love while i'm here alive you know so anyways but so yeah the movie uh, is just showing how the uh, daughter is dogging the mom and then uh no actually they do show where she did kind of start valuing um the mom and stuff when she was there but it was too late so anyways but no so they did show this part of the movie because the daughter she ended up like um leaving and just like abandoning her mom and stuff so uh the mom she was like you know being a caring mom went ahead started searching around looking for her stuff eventually did find her and then uh they had like this emotional conversation like one last conversation and things the daughter broke down in tears started crying and stuff and then at some point in time the mom got sick died they had this big old giant funeral and stuff and i'm thinking like it trips me out how like some movies where it's like because they, they they've done that a couple of times in movies where it's like they have like a big giant funeral scene and you see all these people and it's like dang for a movie though like wow i because i'm saying if i walked up on some stuff like that i'm like 
did somebody actually die? Like, that's the question. So, but anyways, getting back to the movie. So, yeah, so they're having the funeral for the mom. Um, it's all sad and emotional. They're singing, like, church music and all that stuff. I'm saying it was it was a really sad scene. All of a sudden, daughter emerges from the crowd. She starts screaming, let me through. Starts apologizing, all that stuff. Like, she, she is distraught. You can see that she is broken, bruh. She is broken. And my thing is, is this, why couldn't it, like, why couldn't the mom gotten that same amount of love when she was alive? Like, all, like, you're, like, you're mad over the fact that you being black, and it's like, you trying to blame your mom for that and stuff, that's like, fam, you, your mom had no control over her race, you ain't got no control over your race, that is something that you just gotta live with. So, it's, I'm saying, it's like, it's, I guess, like, trying to put that into a friendship term and stuff, like, However your friend is, if your friend is quiet, okay, they got their reasons for being quiet. Maybe understand why they're quiet. Maybe understand why they're a wild individual. If you can help them on that stuff and it's a positive helping, then okay. But it shouldn't be your level of positive um, helping. No, it should be a mutual respect, a mutual um, like positive helping. Where it's like you're not changing them for, um, for you, you're changing them for the better. So I'm saying it's like people, if you got people in your life where if you, and I feel like that's like a question that you got to ask. Like, I feel like that's a question that should be, um, you know, established within the friendship and stuff. Like, have that best friend conversation, you know, but you should ask them. Or, you know, like, it, or do we have, like, a mutual respect for one another? I, like, I guess sit down, talk, communicate, all that stuff, you know? Understand each other if you guys don't understand each other. And at the end of the day, if it's a thing where both of you guys are still friends, then okay, cool. But if not, it's probably for the best, all right? So, anyways, and that being said, I will talk to y'all later. Thank you guys for watching and for listening. Stay tuned for the next episode. Make sure you guys follow me across all social media platforms at tmos boss like and subscribe if you're viewing this on youtube and peace